Today we'll be watching a live print by Printed Patio. They only received their printer recently. This channel and all the content is brought to you by the Automation Nation and the course How to 3D Print a House. We have no external sponsors and we're fully internally supported. So check out our membership and courses in the description. And without further ado, let's learn about Printed Patio. This team is just getting started really fine tuning their operations with their printer here in Florida. So we'll watch this whole print. Right now they're troubleshooting some of the accelerants and hopefully it goes great. They're using an MAI Multi-Mix 3D for the mixer pump system with a custom silo at the top so that they can load jumbo bags of concrete rather than some of the 25 kilogram bags we've seen at other print sites. I hear that this system is one of the most up-to-date and collects lots of data to make adjustments which is often necessary. We're printing in a factory today which is easier than outside but it's a great way to dial in the details and I believe Printed Patio is going to be doing most of their printing off-site anyway. Before they start printing, they dial in the mix and make sure the parameters are right. Different materials display different qualitative properties, but the important thing is that it becomes buildable. I'm here with Brittany from Florida Oceanographic. Hey Brittany. Hi, how are you? You commissioned a print from these guys, Printed Patio. You're going to have them, what do you have in your print? Uh, so it's an artificial reef. Uh, structure habitat for our fish and sea turtles in the game. Uh -huh. And why did you choose Printed Patio to build it? Well, they actually came to us. So Justin's wife donated some lettuce back to us back in 2021, April. Some lettuce? Some lettuce for our sea turtles. Okay. So we have to come up with artificial food for them since we don't have seagrass growing in the mountains in the wild. So our non releasable sea turtles are lettuce. And she donated some. And then after that, it kind of opened up the door with Justin and some of the things we were doing over here. And we partnered together with a local company who supports our organization. And so ended up being in this And what type of fish would be living in this structure? So we have a bunch of different types of fish in there. But it will probably be more of our snappers, sheep's head. Um, we have sergeant majors, a pudding wife that's probably going to really enjoy it. Uh, but pretty much everyone's probably going to hang out around it. On many of the build sites we visit, boats management is a challenge, which is much easier to overcome in this factory setting. So they have these hooks hanging from the ceiling, and it allows them to hoist the hose above where it might bump into the active print. Impressive aspects of the vertical printing system is that they have this interface. Uh, it gives us a, a lot of information, more so than anything else I've seen in the industry so far, personally. Um, so we've got a combination of data coming back from both the nozzle print area as well as the pump. Uh, what you're seeing here is data over time. So we've got things like our pump pressure, our chamber pressure, our accelerant pressure, uh, which is giving us good feedback on real-time water content, right? We can adjust the water content if we see the pump pressure climbing, um, things like the accelerant pressure, right? And um, that's our historical data. What's also really nice is we get real time for other aspects of the print. So things like your ambient uh, air humidity, uh, how strong our servo is working for the actual mixing head, right, and the torque, the actual speed of our robot, so we can follow that along and see how, how quickly we're printing. Uh, all different temperatures from our water to the mortar, uh, just a, a host of really good information. And then what's really nice too is at a um, at a glance we can also see where we're at in terms of how much. Um, water flow we've got, what our pump speed is, and how much accelerant we've got coming through in milliliters per hour. Having comprehensive data, no one element is, is more important than the others, but as a whole, it gives us a real good idea over the course of the print where we need to we make adjustments. And when you see spikes, that's generally uh, an indication of either a stop in the print or um, you know, if we've got a clog coming in, right? It lets us act before we're in danger of losing a hose or having a set where it's going to cause a real problem for us. When you were first getting started today, you ran into a super nuanced problem. Can you go over that? Yeah, so the nuanced problem that you're referring to is the 2K printing system that we're running, we're injecting the accelerant into the print head. So the key element to that is pumping the actual accelerant. What we had happen was over, um, over the downtime between when we last printed and today, the system cleared all of the calibration data which is not so user friendly. It's not something that's in our checklist. It's just not something that's, you know, a configuration behind the scenes. So when we went to activate today, we didn't get any um, accelerant print, uh, sorry, any accelerant movement. And obviously we can't print with no acceleration. So uh, we ended up having to call up Vertigo. They were super responsive. They answered their phone today on the weekends and they dive right in. They said, okay, well, it's because the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the item there isn't calibrated to, to the control system. 
and they were able to walk us through getting it back up and running. So, While I got you here, how did you decide on this hose management system? Um, trial and error. It, it's really, you know, hose management, as you know, is, is one, of the, uh, one of the challenges in the industry. I think uh, we're a little bit short on our hose. We want to extend it a little bit. But keeping up with a the thin surface on a multiple tension line is, is good because if it snags, it just pulls tension out of the out of the retractor and not it doesn't put it on the nozzle or on the hose. Um, and then keeping it above the front area obviously is the, is the next most important thing. So awesome. Justin D'Angelo, CEO of Printed Patio. Hey Justin, how you doing? Hey, good, how are you? Good to see you. Yeah, you too. We met at uh, World of Concrete last year and I really want to thank you. It's amazing that you're letting me film this print you guys have come on. You even said is there anything I can't film? You said no, film whatever you want. It's awesome. I love seeing guys like you that get a printer and then let me film it. You really make this channel possible. So I want to thanks extend thanks to uh, letting me film. Great yeah, it. yeah. It wouldn't be the startup journey if we hit every mistake, right? And I, I think that's kind of part of the reason that we're here. Right? We uh, we did a nice printer. We came from a much smaller printer in a garage and we started fashion, and that had challenges and issues along the way. I think it's fun to document and really see how we got I hope if you come see us next year. We won't have any issues. Today we had a couple. Yeah, I mean, you guys just got your printer a month ago, so it's super great. You've been letting me stop by this early. I know I was eager to see some of the learning experience, and it's incredible to see you guys are already fine tuned. You're not, things happen, but it's not stressing you out. Pieces aren't red, the steam isn't coming out of your ears at this point, so everything looks great. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. The silo holds over one ton of material, but they still need to fill it up during a print this big. So they're able to lift the jumbo bag of concrete with a forklift and then cut it open from the bottom to release the fresh concrete into the silo to be mixed. Justin, can you explain what just happened for the camera? Sure. So, this was a freshman error. We, um, we, we refilled the silo. In order to fill the silo, we want to close the hatch, otherwise it, it, it drowns out the, uh, the mixer underneath. We forgot to open the hatch again when we resumed printing. So this particular mixer, if it, if you, if it uh, reads an empty uh, hopper, it, it'll kill the whole pump. So freshman error we won't do it again <laughs> you can tell they have a good team because when a problem comes up they address it quickly without too much stress and they get right back to printing at the end of the print it'll barely be noticeable where the material stopped it'll just go right over and only a trained eye who knows exactly where to look would be able to tell Great print. Now all that's left is to clean. They've got the cleaning station in the back there. The printer's still sparkly clean, not a drip of concrete on it. They really did a great job today. Some of you may remember the radial axis printer that Emerging Objects uses for their Adobe structures. That's actually using a Scarab printer, which is the same one you see up there. Let's see what Justin has to say about his experience with his Scarab printer. It's a Scarab. It's made by 3D Potter. It's a really good initial printer. It works on three axes. It can print 360 degrees around itself. It's got something like five feet of reach and eight feet of Z height. So a really good footprint to get you started. It works with a simple Imer pump. So the Imer pump that you're seeing next to it. Um, it's a paddle mixer, uh, you know, variable pump speed. So you, you've got a lot of control between the two, right? Printer speed, pump speed to get a, a, a desired result. At the moment, it's a 1K system, but I understand that they're working on something with a little bit more uh, intricacy to the, to the head. The combination of SCARA and Sika 1K is, is you're pretty much right on the money. And that whole system works with a simple pan mixer. So when we started, we had a drum mixer, and we found that the 3D printed material actually just sticks to the mixer and goes around because there's no aggregate. So when we moved to a pan-based mixer, it, it really drastically improves our results and it's got the benefit of having a hatch and you can open the hatch right up above the, the pump and you've got yourself a nice little uh, working area. Um, a really good way to start. So for a cleaning process, one of the big pains is uh, running sponge balls through the hose with this new mixer system. Uh, it's got a really nice feature where it's got a high pressure outlet on the bottom corner. So we just move the hose over to that and it flushes water through the whole system very quickly. Uh, it's actually so uh, efficient that we don't need to use any sponge balls or any follow-up cleaning of the hose. So it's like a one-time done type of deal. It's cool. It's well, it's visually very obvious when it's clean. <laughs> you can see they got all the material out of their extruder head, or which part is that? This is, just a, this is just the gauge between the extruder head and the, uh, and the pipe, but usually you'd have to go through with a ball or something to get that level of cleanliness, and it's, it's pretty good. 
the cleanup process is a race against time because concrete sets, especially printed concrete, sets so quickly, they need to get all of the material off of all of the parts of the printer, the mixer pump station. They do that in the cleaning booth, which they've set up to be waterproof. That way they can clean up everything all at once within, say, 15, 30 minutes. Thanks for coming to the printed patio today. So we have a really successful print with the reef. Obviously, the business that we're going to be in is doing more interesting architectural features. So we want to end up ultimately doing things like large columns, planters, benches, uh, interesting architectural features right, in the public space in a B2B way. So if you're interested in the space and you're in Florida or really anywhere in the southeast, definitely uh, hit us up. You can get us online at uh, printedpatio.com as well as you can email me directly at justin at printedpatio.com or follow us on any of the socials, um, so, uh, Instagram at printedpatio, Facebook, we're on there as well. Um, and if you're also just generally interested, uh, we're going to be looking at providing internship opportunities. And in general, I'm always happy to answer questions for anybody in the industry that just wants to know a little bit about how everything works. Um, the last plug is if you guys are anywhere in the area, uh, come January 12th, we're going to have a big open house. So you'd be more than welcome to come and check it out yourself um, and be with other builders and architects in the space and just see the technology. It really strikes differently when it's in person. So it's, it's an open invitation. January 12th. January 12th. Oh, we're going to have like an Eventbrite link so you can RSVP.